everyone. As you know, my name is uh, Philippe. Today we have Jamie Russo and um, Taya Noble, two amazing guests with two, I think, very interesting, not only career journeys, but I think interesting, interesting things to say about um, talent because they all, they both work in uh, and get to know a lot of uh, talent every month. Uh, Jamie not only kind of run uh, launch house in New York, but also kind of wrote a bestseller book, The Underdog Paradox, which I think uh, is filled with insights relevant to this audience. Um, also a great human being that I had the pleasure to meet. And they, uh, that I met most recently, is a program manager at Launch House LA. Um, education advocate, guest lecturer at University of uh, South California, and among other things that you'll get to know soon. But yeah, so uh, maybe kind of in the, be in the beginning, what we like to do is kind of go over a little bit your own career journeys, Jamie and Thea. Maybe let's start with you, Jamie. Maybe tell us a bit about kind of your career journey so far, how you how you get to be who you are today. I mean, give us some of the highlights and, uh, still, still growing, yeah. <laughs> still growing. Some of the, um, <laughs> the pivotal moments instead of the learnings you got so far. Yeah, totally. Yeah. And thanks for and the whole team for putting this together. Super excited to sit down and, and chat with you guys today. So, um, so my story starts, uh, about two years ago, I lost my job at WeWork. Um, and in that dark moment, um, wrote a post on LinkedIn, just like documenting like my entire and the post, like a lot of those like posts on LinkedIn, like blew up, it went viral overnight. And all of a sudden I was sitting there with all of this attention on me and not knowing like what to say or what to do next. Um, I, I made like a, a public commitment there on LinkedIn in the comment section of my posts, suggesting that I was going to write every day for a hundred days and bring people along for the ride with my journey. And so, um, you know, over the course of the ensuing months, uh, just really discovered like a passion for storytelling and, and bu audience building. And by accident, like over the course of three months, like grew an audience on LinkedIn from zero to 10,000 followers. Um, just through the course of publishing about, um, you know, about me, about the things I was doing, about the things I was passionate about, the people that I met. And um, I, I had no idea, like, that writing online could, like, still be, a, a like, a, something folks could do. Like, I, I knew, like, bloggers from decades earlier, like, building, like, large audiences, but didn't know, like, that would be something I could do. And so... Um, I don't know. LinkedIn, LinkedIn's a really cool place, but, uh, I noticed a lot of the folks might were like super corporate -y. Like I was like looking out there, seeing the comments, seeing the likes, and it was like all people in suits. And I was like, I don't really want to write for these people. <laughs> so I hopped over to Twitter, uh, launched a sub stack, like everyone was doing a year and a half ago and started writing there. And, um, you know, through the process of like building audience and, and writing, um, chose to turn a lot of that content into a book and the, we can talk later about like the big ideas and the main idea behind some of the writing. But, um, to me, like that was one of the best ways that I could channel my creativity, um, during one of those, you know, darker, uh, darker times that I've had in my life. And, uh, I don't know, just, it's, it's been a, a really fun ride over the course of the last year. Um, you know, worked at a couple of really cool companies, including Amazon, most recently joined the team at launch house and like a rocket ship. Maybe we'll talk about that later, but. Um, this isn't like a launch house ad. I want to <laughs> maybe stick to the topic today and make sure it's really beneficial to the audience. But, uh, yeah, it's a little about me. Thank you, Jamie. Um, I'm, I mean, I have like well, four or five follow-up questions just, uh, with your interest. So I think this would be an interesting conversation, but yeah, let's hear uh, from Faye. Tell us a little, a little bit about your journey. So who is? What are you working on and what are you most proud of so far? Great. Hi, everyone. My name is Thea and I um, 
am the program manager in Los Angeles for Launch House. I started my career getting my master's in entrepreneurship and innovation at USC. So I was like really interested in how um, founders start companies and, and why and um, like looking deeper into just startup culture and studying it from, um, you know, like from a from a business perspective. And then afterwards, I went into venture capital. So I worked at a couple of funds and I worked at the Techstars um, Accelerator. And most recently, I was vice president of platform at GC Ventures, which was really cool. Um, it's a fund focused completely on the future of learning. Um, so it was really interesting to work with a lot of different global founders who are shaping the way that global education is happening. And we also do this huge summit called the ASV Summit, where we um, had like over um, like 700 speakers and 5,000 um, attendees, which was crazy doing it through COVID. Um, and I launched a million dollar pitch competition. So it was really cool to hear like a lot of different stories. We had over 700 startups go through that um, and did the grand prize with Mindy Kaling. So got to just meet a ton of different people in the ecosystem through that. Um, as Felipe said, I also guest lecture at USC. And a fun thing is my class is all a group of Navy SEALs. So I can dig in deeper to that. So I've been teaching um, and just hanging out with a lot of people in the startup ecosystem and um, getting to know a lot of different founders. And I think belief capital is an amazing um, topic because actually my study is like on the people side, the emotional intelligence side and what makes great teams. So that's actually my focus within the startup ecosystem as well. Thank you. Yeah. So, I mean, let's uh, uh, talk a little bit about the Leaf Capital. Probably um, most of the people that are listening and they'll listen to the recording afterwards um, don't have a clear idea of belief, what Leaf Capital is. So what does it mean to both of you? What does it mean for you to you? Oh, sure. So um, for me, I think it's like understanding who who you want to back and, and why. Um, I took this really interesting class called Founder's Dilemma when I was at USC with um, Professor Noam Wasserman, who actually commuted from Harvard. And his whole thing was like studying tons of different founders across the world and like understanding what makes the best teams. Um, and 60% of startups actually fail due to team issues. You know, it's not product market fit or lack of revenue or, you know, having a high burn or something. It's, it's the team dynamics. So understanding who you want to back is the most critical reasoning. Um, digging deeper into that within teams like com complementary skill sets is really important because a lot of times people like to work with people who are like them, but, um, you know, they don't have, then they, they have too much overlap. Um, and then finding people who have like a certain vision, emotional intelligence and a connection to the problem that they're trying to solve. So there's like a reason behind why they're doing it. Um, and so the, I always say like, you're backing the person at the early stage. Um, because the idea is going to change a lot and um, the execution is what matters the most. I think one thing that's really interesting. So um, like Thea comes from a background in, in traditional venture. And when I think about what founders receive uh, when uh, a venture capitalist invests in them, I kind of think of it as like three things. We've thought about this sometimes as like the unbundling of venture capital, but those things are like first, like in the bank, <laughs> like, uh, second is like social capital. So you're now like friends, you know, your, your friends are, uh, they're the extended network of that, of that venture capital firm. We're seeing that at launch house right now, all the A16D portfolio companies are now here to like support launch house. We're here to support them like collaboration and so forth. Like that's, that's the second thing. Uh, so financial capital, social capital. The third thing I see is belief capital and belief capital to me is like, holy shit, like Andrew Chen believes in us. Like that's a really powerful feeling as a, as a founder or as an early employee at a company when, uh, you know, we, we believe in the idea, <laughs> like, of course we believe in the idea, but to get someone, uh, of, of that caliber to say, like, we believe in you too. And we've invested in all these companies before you. And like, we've chosen to bet on, on you guys now, like that's really powerful. And, um, I think one thing all founders know and realize and sometimes maybe forget when the times are dark, but like, uh, you know, belief in yourself is the most, most important thing. Um, uh, it's a lot easier to believe in yourself when others choose to believe in you. And, and we can talk about that. Uh, it's, a, it's a topic I, I read, wrote about, about in, in my book. Um, but I, I think that's infatuating and, 
Uh, that's that's why I think like belief capital is such a powerful idea. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. And I'll take back on that. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> oh, I'll just piggyback back on that with Jamie because I mean I experienced that myself with Launch House. I had a pretty like cushy job, and so when I was thinking about Launch House, I was like, oh, this is such an amazing startup. But you know, it, it's a startup. It's not. Um, you know, it's brand new and like hearing like, Hey, like I had heard that Andreessen Horowitz was going to back it. And like the amazing other lineup investors beforehand, I was like, wow, like there's really a lot of people backing this who have built and scale for, um, products and, and startups and, um, and funds in the startup ecosystem. And like, they really believe in the founders. I already believed in the founders, but it was like just this great like validation. So I've personally experienced well. Well, um, I was thinking here while well, you're speaking, um, Jamie, how, I mean, I think we all agree that having someone that you look up to believing in you and kind of showing that belief either with, uh, money or kind of public recognition, um, but how do you, well, how's the relationship between like this, other people believing in you, how, how you see yourself and how you believe in yourself, what do you think? needs or should come first and kind of how they uh, influence uh, each other kind of self nice. and the uh, belief from others. Yeah. Nice. So, um, I, I oftentimes think like you can't help others until you, uh, have helped yourself. <laughs> so like if, if we can't find inner peace in ourselves, like we can't help others find inner peace in themselves. Um, if we don't believe in our, ourselves, it's, it's difficult to like believe in others and have them like feel, feel something. So I think, uh, everything starts kind of on, on the inside. And, um, to me, uh, there, there's like a really, uh, like simple framework for thinking about this. I think in like psychology, they call it, or in human psychology, they call it like the ABCs, like, uh, action, belief, consequence. And uh, the idea here is like, hypothetically speaking, like, let's take a sports analogy. Cause like a lot of people can understand that. Like, let's say you are a baseball player and you have a big game tomorrow against the best team in the league. Um, there's two ways you can kind of go to sleep the night before the game. You can go to sleep thinking, oh shit, like we're going to get our asses whooped. <laughs> or you can go to sleep thinking like, man, I'm going to give it my all. We're going to show them what we got. And, um, it, in, in psychology, they discovered, like, if you go to sleep thinking, the first way you're going to lose more often than when you go to thinking the second way. And when we think about ABCs, like action, belief, consequence, uh, if you believe you're going to lose, you're more likely to lose. Um, the consequence and the outcome will kind of lead that way. Um, like more often than not. And so to me, when it comes to belief capital, like there's a, a, a very, very easy word that we can all understand and wrap our brains around. It's like confidence. <laughs> you know, if, if we have developed that confidence in ourselves, like that will enable us to pass it on to others. But until we've developed that confidence, it's really difficult to. Yeah. Yeah. I think it makes sense. I think the, what I, also I was trying to ask is that I completely agree with that, but sometimes, especially I think if you think about people coming from more um, underprivileged backgrounds that have, um, uh, a lot of, a lot of their contacts and, uh, signals around them, um, tell them that th they shouldn't believe in, in themselves and that they, they won't win. So sometimes you need kind of the first thing is having someone external believing in you. So you, you can start building your own self-belief. So kind of the trigger comes from the outside and then you build that self-belief that will kind of have, um, its consequences, I guess. Yeah. I'm curious, uh, Thea, if you had like any mentors when you were young, um, or like role models you looked up to, because I think role models and mentors are something that are, are so important to us when we're young. Yeah. That's yeah. a great question. I, I mean, I think even, um, just my parents, like my, my dad is an entrepreneur and my brother and my grandpa, like actually no one in my family has besides me has held, has held a job. Like they've all been founders. So I think just like growing up in that ecosystem, um, definitely inspired me. And then when I actually started my career in venture, um, I kind of like what you're saying, like you can see what you can believe. Um, I didn't know a ton about it before grad school. And 
um, ended up having a, a guest speaker who was Kara Weber. She's the COO of Dapper Labs now, and she was the president of Brood, which um, was the creator of Little Michaela, that um, giant virtual um, virtual influencer. And she also had her own VC fund. And like having her speak to the class and like being a like a prominent woman in the space was like very interesting for me. And then I ended up interning for her. And so I think like seeing someone in that position, like really like hands on would be great. And then it's going to come full circle. Hopefully she's going to speak at Launch House um, next month. But just like seeing people like doing stuff like in your close proximity and learning from them is definitely like a good way to absorb because I'm from Colorado, from Vail, from like a small town. So like that ecosystem isn't really existent um, there. Yeah, see, that, that's all kind of great uh, tools and kind of when you have that representation around you of uh, other people that made it and you're surrounded by people that uh, uh, were success successful and then you can kind of follow their footsteps. I think that's a big help someone can can have. And I think you, you your parents are also kind of uh, small business owners, right? So I think yeah. seeing, seeing this around you, I think, uh, I mean, you kind of, your, your context or environment is you're surrounded by this belief capital or at least rep representation of it. What the thing is trying to do kind of an empathy exercise here. So try to imagine that both of you didn't have kind of these role, role, role models around you. What would you say would be kind of a good strategy or what? Could you do to kind of to build build your kind of self confidence, self belief, or where could you find some of this belief capital if mm -hmm. you were, yeah, if you were not kind of uh, born with a lot of that? Yeah, ability. yeah. I mean, we can like we can like take it back to like middle school or high school, and uh, so if you kind of grow up in an environment where you don't have access to those resources, or those mentors, um, you can you know put yourself push yourself outside your comfort zone uh, to to join after school programs, um, uh, you could, uh, uh, participate in, uh, like, uh, so for example, <laughs> sorry, I'm like droning on here. Uh, so I volunteered for seven years in an organization called build build.org and build, uh, uses entrepreneurship as a hook to propel high school, uh, under-resourced high school students, um, from high school to college, to career success. And the way that they do it is by through their freshman year, uh, helping these students uh, form a team, build a product and start a company, right? And the team uh, that I supported <laughs> uh, started a company called iTies, <laughs> all team of girls that started a men's necktie business because they saw in their high school, which they had a school uniform, that all the boys had these stupid ties and they thought they could design way better ties, right? Dopest thing about these ties, Philippe, is on the back side of them, they all had a pocket so you could put like a Metro card or your cash or something like that. Um, but long story short, like this was something all of these students had like taken this leap of faith to participate in this after school program as freshmen. Um, something that like a lot of them thought would be like really stupid, but realized like by their sophomore or junior year that it was helping put them on a on a trajectory that a lot of the other students at their school didn't have. Right. So um, there's there's a lot of things, uh, you know, uh, like different mentorship programs, you can go out there and, and, and find Boys and Girls Club of America, et cetera, um, that could could help get you access uh, to uh, the type of people that you might not see in your neighborhood or where you grew up. Yeah, that's, um, okay. what about you, you Tia? Um, what would you kind of recommend or if you didn't have the these role models you had, where would you kind of look for um, Belief capital. What what could you do to kind of to build this self confidence? Yeah, that's a great way. So I think there's the external resource. There's external resources and internal resources that um, that you need to think about. So I'm actually a part of a program where I help um, high school students from underserved areas um, get into college and write their college essays. And so a lot of what colleges care about is like what they want to do career wise. And you have to have like a lot of belief in, in yourself and confidence to have these, you know, great career aspirations. First, I think it really starts with you before you can go external. So like writing down your goals, like, Hey, what are your biggest strengths? What are your weaknesses? What can you see yourself building and becoming beforehand? And you need to kind of identify that in yourself 
before others can help you um, do that. And a lot of it is like self-exploration, meeting different people, trying different things, like understanding what they're doing, like trying a lot of different clubs, activities, and just like going out there and seeing what you like. Um, And then second is like finding that external mentorship. And I would say a lot of it, honestly, for me has been through education. So it has to depend you know, if if that is what does well for you, but like education and then second communities. So different like startup communities, founder communities where you can go to different talks and you can like speak to the people who are doing the fireside chats beforehand and have maybe made it and like hear their stories, like understand their journey um, and kind of see them as role models and then maybe reach out to a couple of them to be mentors. Um, and maybe it starts informal, but then like finding a couple personal board of advisors um there's this saying i've heard before which is like you're the average of the five people you hang out with the most so finding people that really inspire you that are a peers and then b are like people you would want to become later and trying to like get a group around around you who really like inspire you either from like a career aspect or just from like a personality aspect or something like that yeah um totally makes sense and i'm uh thinking let's go on the on the little uh tangent here which is um i was thinking about what you're saying about self exploration about career goals and what we want to do career-wise this is actually something we've been thinking about that talent protocol because kind of the template that we use for um your professional identity the cvs we use only focus on past and present basically what have you done and uh so far and where are you now And especially kind of in the context of talent protocol, where asking people to invest in your career, it makes, um, you have to talk about the future. So what your ambitions are, why do you need help? Where do you want to go? And this is actually, because it's not on the de- template we use to define ourselves professionally. A lot of people don't think about it very uh, deeply. So what do they want? Where do, what goals do they have? Where do they want to go? What they want to achieve? And what we've been noticing is that to, because this is an important part of the, the talent's profile and talent protocol is that a lot of people don't never ask themselves um, this question. And although this is probably a common question to, to, yeah, to be asked on a job interview, since it's not on the, um, the, this template or the CV template, a lot of people don't think about it. So, and what's your take on this or well, how? How can we kind of help people kind of start exploring this sooner? Is it, uh, yeah. So kind of, you have any thoughts on this on how can we help people s- explore better kind of what they, I mean, if you career as a startup, I mean, it makes total sense to think about goals and roadmap and how to get there. Uh, maybe that's the way. Yeah. I mean, I actually lead, um, I lead an entire class, a, a workshop with Navy SEALs that are transitioning out of being Navy SEALs into the business sector. Um, and we do something similar. Um, Navy SEALs have this thing called a coat of arms and we translate their goals to the coat of arms and we actually like draw it out. Um, and with that, we, um, we set it up into like four different sections. So we have what is their like biggest um, professional accomplishment, their biggest accomplishment in their personal life. And then what are like their, goals now for their personal life like what do they want their life to look like afterwards um and then what do they want their professional life to look like afterwards and then we add a motto on the ribbon so it's like what's their life mantra what's their motto um and we we take a good way to start with it is we take a giant sheet of values um you know like is that being intellectually curious is that being funny is that being a hard worker you know like all different types of values you can have in your life um and i have them circle 10 and then From the 10, they narrow it down to three. And we make sure that their values align with both their professional and personal goals. And so that's how I do goal setting with them. I've done goal setting in different ways, but this is with like a very um, intense group of people, Navy SEALs, which is like the top of the top that you can be in the Navy, you know, like physically and mentally, and they go through a ton of stuff. So they're trying to figure out like their next stage of life. And that's the framework that they use. So starting with your values and then figuring out like, okay, if your values is like really focused on like, you know, on family, things like that. Like maybe you don't want to be in a corporate job where you're making a lot of money, but you don't get to see them. But if your values are really to be like professionally respected and, you know, to like make a lot of money, like it's worth the grind, like start a startup, things like that. So we do different personality 
um, for your career based on like your, your, your values. I think it's really cool, uh, Philippe, what you guys are doing, because in addition to everything Thea just touched on, like the power of manifestation <laughs> is so crucial, especially for founders and creators. Um, like as a founder, like you're setting like a three month goal or a one year target and like everything that you do to the people that you hire, to the decisions that you make are like aimed at like hitting those milestones, right? And everything that you achieve one thing after the other is like uh, the power of your ability to manifest that uh, and make it happen. And obviously, you know, changing directions and pivoting along the way as you learn new things. But at the end of the day, it's all about like, setting that target and hitting it <laughs> over and over. And so the fact that you might help provide people with like a, a template that enables them to like set these goals themselves in ways that they might not do it uh, on their own is really helpful. Like I'm a big note taker. I uh, have like this crazy notebook uh, that I carry around every single where, every, every single place I go. And I just am, am constantly like writing lists about things that I want to get done. And they're not like my daily tasks, but they're things that I'm like dreaming about and thinking about for myself. And the way that I think about it is like, if I see patterns happening over and over and over again, like those are things that are really important and I revisit those and I try to manifest them. Yeah. I mean, th thank you, Thea. I'm, I kind of, uh, already kind of defined kind of three steps, uh, under kind of this belief capital idea. So, um, first step, knowing yourself and your values, then kind of exploring and defining your goals and roadmap. And like you said, Jamie, uh, manifesting what you want. And I think this will kind of signal to other people, what kind of help do you need? What kind of mentors and supporters make sense to you? And then, yeah, this is the third step where you start building kind of your support network based on your values and your goals. And this people will kind of join your career journey, so to speak. And then that's when you get start. Uh, getting a lot of that belief capital from the right people and uh, being part of your your journey. Of course, just kind of to close this little tangent and sound protocol, I think we've been witnessing this is that when when someone buys your token and actually puts money, invests money in your career, I think that's the biggest uh, signal of belief that someone can can have. And I mean, we've been just for, from seeing testimonials and talking to people, the, the change in mindset that that simple thing creates, I think it's um, super powerful. So even as the founders, just by seeing the people buying our tokens, and I mean, we, we, we raised uh, a big amount of money as a company, but this is different when kind of people kind of uh, invest in you personally and what kind of that changes and kind of relationship that that builds and um, even kind of your own self-confidence and self-belief just by having people buying your token i think it's super powerful i think it's really good for accountability as well yeah um uh but i'll i'll say this like it's it's exciting uh to see a creator or a founder set a goal and then hit it you know like that's a that's a reason for me to fist pump, you know, and like for them to do it over and over and over again, that makes me want to support them more because like, I know they're on a path and when they say they're going to do something, they do it. And, uh, if there's anyone that's like doing this on a 100 X level, like Elon Musk is a dreamer, right? Like he, he creates this like crazy vision for how he wants to see the future. It's like, you know, building spaceships and cars and all these crazy things. And then like, he, he sets that vision and then he like brings people along for the ride with him. And every single time he like hits another goal or like lands that rocket ship somehow, like on that pad, like out in the ocean, it's like, holy shit. Like, I can't believe he just did that. <laughs> and, uh, that makes other people want to root for him, you know? And it's going to be the same way with anyone, uh, at talent protocol as well. It's like every single time you kind of like invest in someone and, and want them to do well, every single time they do well, it's going to be another reason to cheer and another reason to invest. Yeah, for sure. It's kind of almost this flywheel of, um, you get some belief capital by people investing in you that creates accountability in you that makes you more, um, 
increases the chances that you reach your goals and then you reach your goals uh, and that will feed more kind of belief and more investment in you and it's kind of the flywheel that hopefully will get people to their um, reach success and ful fulfillment. Um, uh, I like kind of this mental framework we got to, but I, I suggest um, now trying to look at it at belief capital from the other point of view. So from the point of view of someone um, supporting, believing in 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 someone. So what do you think, um, Tia? I can start with you. What are kind of the best way to show someone that you believe in them? Of course, we talked about tokens, uh, but besides that, what are good ways for you to kind of signal and to show um, someone that's uh, starting that you believe in them? Yeah, I think there's a lot of different ways. Um, one is obvious, which is capital. So like when you're investing in a startup, your founders leave in them. So like anytime you're doing an angel investment or uh, VC investment, you are totally signaling you believe in them. That's the most obvious. Second, I think is like social capital and connections. So like connecting them to other people in your network who can help them in specific ways and like showing that you're able to create more access for them because access is critical. Um, third would be time. So like, hey, are you like down to beta test their project or like you know, like, uh, you know, give them advice on, on their landing page or whatever, but like spending time with them and actually like digging deep and like helping them operationally. Um, and then fourth, I would say is like emotional support. So like hyping them up, amplifying them, you know, sharing what they're working on social media, like talking about them in the best of ways. And also like when they need you and in tough times, like being there to like talk through with them. So I would say it's you, options are to summarize the capital, um, like operational belief, connections and access, and then um, actually giving them your time. Yep, that was a good, very good and concise summary there. <laughs> I can tell that you thought about this a lot. Um, Jamie, what about you? I honestly, I, I don't even want to add to that. <laughs> Let's just <laughs> mi mic drop, go to the next one. Yeah. <laughs> This podcast is sponsored by Talent Protocol, the Web3 professional network where anyone can invest in high potential talent. I was thinking, and also for the two of you, um, kind of, if you think about it, those kind of VCs and investors and uh, launch house are both trying to kind of support um, building this uh, support network, a safety net for founders with all of those things that you mentioned, capsule, community, time, emotional support. Um, how would you kind of, kind of compare the two? Compare, I mean, it doesn't mean that one's better than the other, but compare the two approaches, what kind of launch house is trying to do to kind of build that support network and also that belief capital, because I think I've been through launch house, so I know that that community does provide you a lot of belief capital, and I'm sure uh, VC as well in a different way. So maybe try and you try to explore and kind of compare the two approaches and how to build belief capital for founders. Fia, I don't know. I don't know if you have thoughts on it. Um, so one one big distinction between launch house and like venture is like launch house is not investing in these companies when they come join us, right? So that that's a that's a huge differentiator. And uh, there are there are benefits to that. Like some founders like aren't looking for outside capital. Some founders are looking for a place where they can go build. Um, and that's what Launch House provides. The benefits that you um, Launch House is like surrounded by 20 other founders or builders, like 24 seven for 30 straight days. And I, it's kind of like night and day. It's, it's like watching folks like enter their freshman year of college and leave with seniors, like in a month, like the, the level of confidence and belief that the folks have like in themselves upon like completing this program is completely night and day. And uh, I don't know, like being, <laughs> I think everyone can relate to that, like being kind of like a scared freshman or first year at university, um, kind of like not knowing and not knowing like what you're about to get yourself into. Also like not knowing who you are and like what you believe in and, and stuff like that. And then like kind of coming out four years later, completely transformed, like for some reason, cause it's on such like a, a hyper, <laughs> Uh, like adrenaline rushed uh, visit while you're while you're living here, um, you you oftentimes can see that uh, with people within 30 days, um, just developing that confidence. Yeah, totally. Um, 
kind of relating to my answer, I would say um, the emotional support. I totally see we do these things called founder circles where we ask like big life questions like where do you see yourself at the end of your life or what made you things like that and people really open up in a way that I've never seen before so I think we have the other founders as well to support each other emotionally um there's a super active community too so like like Jamie and I help get connections to funding or you know different connections and so forth but also the community really helps each other out because there's so much expertise that we don't have and like they that's the time aspect so people will like put in the discord like there's an ask channel and like people are always willing to help jump in and do those asks so I think the community side the emotional side and then the time because you're spending so much time together so like everyone really gets to know each other and like prove out your belief and like support each other and even when I was in the car like um, before I listened, you did a you did a um, announcement with some people from like Lauren and Christian and like some different people who were in Launch House and they were saying like who they wanted to invest in with even within the class. So like they really believe in each other and like there's this strong bond of like, uh, um, you know, it's not there's more pie for everyone. It's not like a and some game. So everyone really wants to empower each other together um, and really this kind of like group that's working together to reach their goals. Yeah, of course. I mean, I've been through both so I can uh um totally agree with what you said i was thinking uh because i mean if you're living with another other founders for a month of course um you'll get a big dose of that belief capital what about people that are not la or that are not in silicon valley so most people in the world are, are not um near or close to this kind of uh bubbles, this kind of belief capital center, so to speak. So places in the world where it's um, probably easier for you to get um, uh, a good dose of belief capital. What about people that are far away from this? So the question would be, how can we, what can we do to make sure that people that are spread around the world get a good dose of belief capital um, digitally? <laughs> Yeah. I mean, like the internet's powerful. Like I see yeah. Kyle, B Kyle Bowes here in the audience and like, I met Kyle through Twitter like a year and a half ago. And he's like someone who believed in me early on. I'm someone who believed in him early on. There were like months on end where we like set up weekly calls to like help support one another and the stuff that we were going through, um, in both of our careers individually. And so the internet's a powerful place. Twitter, like, let's just give Twitter a lot of credit for like bringing like-minded people closer together. Um, but there's a variety of other online uh, programs that are structured and out there to support founders, to support creators, um, launch house ourselves. I mean, we're launching like a program in the metaverse. <laughs> um, as we speak, we're hosting our first cohort right now. So like all these things are all that you can, you know, get physical. Um, like we're incredibly bullish on IRL experiences at launch house, but those, those experiences are also available online digitally uh, at Launch House and elsewhere. Yeah. Yeah. So there's specific communities like their Slack communities. Like I know like bunch of founders, which is a lot of different founders from around the world. Um, Discord communities, you know, like, like for instance, Launch House, free boot camps. I, um, as I've said, was previously vice president of platform at GSV Ventures. We did an entire free boot camp called GSV Boot Camp. Um, and it was all a way to connect founders from across the world. And we had, you know, people from Latin America, from MENA, from from all different regions. Um, and they could connect with each other, connect with resources. So there's both free and paid um, different types of communities out there. So and then social media. I've met so many people off Twitter that I'm friends with in real life, like uh, Megan Lois, who she's the founder of Gen Z VCs. She's flying out. She's going to stay with me in, in LA and she's going to meet a lot of different people um, in the in the program. And she's also going to speak at Launch House. And like we became friends over Twitter and now we're like totally real life friends as well. And uh, I have like five or six people over Twitter that are like super good friends that like we met just from tweeting, DMing each other. And now we've hanged out, hung out in real life and we actually live at different different parts of the world. I want to use like writing as an example as well. Um, of how to attract the right people to you, because I don't think a lot of people like use, use Twitter as a tool for creating uh, as much as they use it for consuming. And similarly with a lot of the other like social platforms out there. Um, so I, I, I wouldn't be where I am today without like having put like 
digital pen to digital paper on LinkedIn two years ago. Like that's me publishing over a hundred articles on LinkedIn, like drew a huge group of supporters to like a magnet, <laughs> like a magnet to me. And, um, you know, Twitter is the same thing, like publishing every day on a platform like Twitter, publishing every day on a platform like Medium. Like these are things that are going to uh, get folks interested in you and want to support you because they're like, holy crap, like this individual is putting all this time, effort, and energy into something. Clearly they must be like passionate about it. And like we all as human beings is very natural to want to support passionate people. Like it's exciting to help support people in doing something that they're passionate about. There's like nothing better than that. Um, so like, I, I encourage everyone, like if you're struggling to like find that community, you can create that community around yourselves. David Perel calls it like the personal monopoly, right? I mean, you can create that community around yourself by publishing your thoughts, the things you're passionate about, uh, like sharing a skill that you have and teaching others, like we all can be teachers. That, that's an amazing point, Jamie. Um, and actually my last three jobs I haven't applied to, um, people have found me through writing. So through writing on Medium, LinkedIn, and Twitter. Um, and like, that's, that's how I like totally what I owe my career to. Um, I, I wrote a piece on like how to break into venture capital that Alexis Ohanian reposted and a lot of different people. And so like, I, I got a lot of connections through that and, and a few different ones. So like, I, I forgot about that, but that's actually my number one way I've grown my career is through my writing. Yeah, I'll, uh, I'll add that to, uh, step by step guide we were talking about. So the way of start building your support network is through writing and putting yourself out there. And what, one question I have um, uh, for Jamie or for both is that basically talking about how people can find you and how and by writing you signal what kind of people are interesting to you and you start building that personal community, like you're saying, like community surrounding your career and your career goals. What well, is the difference? Because Jamie, you wrote first on LinkedIn, then on Twitter, then on Substack, right? So, uh, Substack. So kind of how do you see those, all these different platforms uh, or the difference between them to be found, but also I think more importantly on how to maintain this relationship. So people find you, they are interested in, in what you're doing and in your career and how, and especially talking about digitally that your, this community, that can be just kind of 50 people, a hundred people it doesn't need to be more for, for most people. It's like this idea of a committed support network more than a audience or a fan base. So how do you, do you personally, or, uh, what uh, ways do you, do you see that we can kind of keep maintain these relationships and maintain this support network or community yeah. kind of close and engaged and, um, yeah. Yeah. I think, I think uh, oftentimes when you like talk to people who are interested in writing online or creating, like creating in any way, whether it's like audio through podcasting, video on YouTube, et cetera, like one of the, one of the first things a lot of folks come to me and say, when they want to get started writing online is like, well, where do I start? Like. Should I build a website? Should I write on Medium? Should I write on LinkedIn? Like I can get the most reach through Twitter, blah, blah, blah. And the answer is like, you just need to start somewhere. <laughs> uh, you, you just need to start somewhere, pick it, you know? Like Substack's great, like go write on Substack. It's, it's incredible. Um, uh, I, I, I think that's most important. Number two, um, like make a, make a commitment. Even better, like make a, make a public commitment. Um, like when I started writing on LinkedIn, I told everyone I was going to publish 90 articles in 90 days and bring them along for the ride. And, uh, by making that public commitment, it made me feel accountable to the world and follow through. It also gave them like clear expectations for what was coming, what was ahead. And, uh, so I think, I think those two things are really important. Now, uh, when it comes to like publishing across a variety of platforms, um, I, I personally have seen like varying levels of success, like me, myself, uh, you know, I built an audience on LinkedIn from zero to 10,000 in three months. And, uh, on Substack, I only grew my newsletter to a thousand subscribers in a year, you know, very, very different. Um, but one isn't, what is One isn't better than the other or stronger than the other. It's kind of like, who do you enjoy writing for? And like, um, 
I don't know, what is that audience and affinity and community being formed around you? Um, that's, that's kind of how I think about it. Um, I don't know if there's like any right or wrong answer to, to this, but I found like, pick a place, <laughs> make a commitment and start writing. Yeah. And I think one, th one thing that's important here, and I'll kind of end it over to you, uh, after, uh, Thea is that, I mean, we're kind of formatted to think about this as a quantity game. So we're writing, so the more followers, the bigger the audience we have, the better. And especially in this, the case that we're discussing, where you're looking to build kind of a community surrounding your kind of your, your, your goals and your career goals, quality is much more important than that. So like, like you mentioned, Thea, I think people trying to hire you, people wanting to work with you. I mean, you can have an audience of 10 and that, that 10 can kind of open you a lot of doors and you can have an audience of, audience of 10,000 that won't help you with nothing in, in your career. So I think that's kind of a good thing to think, think about when you're writing. So not taking quantity as a very important metric, but most of all, um, if you have the right, uh, people and the kind of the quality and how can they help you? Um, but it's uh, not easy kind of to change that mindset. Um, Thea, what, what, what would you say about this? Yeah, I, I agree quality? with that. I agree with that. I actually have a tweet that's like, I would rather have 1000 engaged followers on Twitter than, you know, 10,000 unengaged ones. And I truly, truly believe that. Uh, I, but I do think you have to like put yourself out there you know, more often than not, because you can't just write two or three things, but I'm definitely more of a quality gal. Like you'll notice there's some people that are tweeting like 30 times a day and, um, they do get more followers, but like, I'm very much more in the, in the quality camp. Um, but I do think sometimes you should put yourself out there, try new formats. Um, and then yeah, understanding formats and audiences. Like I have a wildly different, I have a very engaged Instagram following as well. Um, but it's, it's private. Um, and I have a Twitter following and it's like completely different types of people. So, um, understanding like who, like Twitter's are like startup-y and like, you know, my Instagram is very like fashion. Art. So like understanding like where your target audience is goals, I think the platform is going to depend. And then also format, like if, are you more of like a short form writer or a long form, um, or are you more visual, like better for TikTok, things like that. So, um, I think distribution is key too when you're creating content and then also partnering with other people who have like already have a distribution. Like I know when I get tagged and things from like people who are bigger online or something like that helps. So like not just making it all about you, but making it more like community focused. Yeah, totally, totally uh, agree. I mean, when I was talking about quality versus quantity it was not so much about the content because I agree that you need to experiment and put yourself out there. It's more about um, worrying about the amount of followers and people that are reading what you write. But also I agree that distribution is key and for you to find the right person you might need to go, <laughs> and a lot, a lot of them need. To... Um, but yeah, I think we're all reaching kind of our uh, the end of this Twitter spaces. I think to close it, uh, I would like to ask you to maybe name one people, one person that believed in you, and who that gave you good dose of belief capital that you you feel was important to you i mean if you don't want to name it just kind of tell, tell us kind of the story or the context of that specific situation and how did that help you kind of be where you are today uh yeah i, I can start um and for me it's it's not one person but it is is a group and it's a group that i met through the course of writing online over the last couple of years um I think, I think it's always helpful to do things with friends. Like I'm a very social person, so maybe that's like what works for me, but, um, like having a, a good core group of friends has like helped get me through tough times, like all, all throughout my life. And so the pandemic was no different <laughs> trying to publish a book and, uh, and build an audience like requires a team <laughs> and that team doesn't need to work for you. That team can just be like a core group of really amazing selfless friends or peers. And so, um, yeah, that's, that's what's helped me, Philippe. Thanks, Jimmy. Pia, what's your, um, example story? Um, yeah, 
I'll I'll say for me, it was um, Eve Yu. I met him at a startup networking event um, when I was working at Techstars and the Accelerator. Um, and I pitched this idea of kind of some like one little workshop that I had done with founders there. And he was like, oh, this is super kind of business school. And then I taught it once and it went really well. And they made a like a class around it and was um, 22 at the time and teaching people in their 30s. And like for that, that's been really cool for me to like be teaching so young um, and I've been doing that for years. So I definitely for him and like believing in me, like, hey, you can do that. Like you can teach at a graduate level um, and just like guest lecture. So um, yeah, for me, it's been him and then other people throughout my life as well. And I feel like I've had it with other people too that I've just seen that I know are going to be stars someday. Thank you. Thank you for both for sharing uh, the, this kind of personal moment, but also uh, all your uh, expertise and sharing a little bit about your journey with us. Um, hopefully, we both, Talent Protocol and Launch House, um, continues to support and help people uh, believe in themselves and believe in others and show that. Uh, yeah, thank you both for coming and for your time. Thanks. Thank so you. Really appreciate it. Yeah, such a great mission. Hey, have, thanks for letting us be a part of it. We have, I think we have very similar missions, just two different ways of um, achieving it. Um, but yeah, thank you and see you soon, hopefully. Bye bye. Also, cheers, thanks everyone. Bye. See you next week. Bye bye. Bye. If today's episode inspired you, don't forget to follow us on your podcast app to never miss upcoming interviews. Also, if you would like to share your journey with us, you know any hidden talent, or you just want to keep in touch with us, you can find our email in the description.